So I'm fermenting vegetables. I'm getting back into my habit of fermenting vegetables. I took a break in the winter time because it takes you know, 20, 25 days for vegetables to ferment in the winter. So I just puree them unless I have a big batch. I usually make a huge batch in the fall and then freeze it. And then when I run out of that in the winter, I just puree, even though I could continue to ferment, but I just got out of the habit. So now this is my first batch of the year. I am going to be fermenting um, collard greens, mustard greens, cabbage, red cabbage, green cabbage, zucchini, squash, broccoli, and garlic. And yes, you heard that right. I will be adding garlic to my ferment. The reason why I add garlic is because it has a ton of great benefits as far as detoxifying the system. It turns our dogs into natural flea and tick repellents. And um, so they get garlic in their vegetables. So that was one squash. And I don't chop it up into little tiny um, things. I just chop it up so that it would fit into a jar. And so I have them. I use just regular wide mouth jars. I have this one and I have some blue ones. You can pick them up like at, look for garage, garage sales. I just looked on Craigslist for people who are looking at giving away um, or selling jars and my boyfriend got uh, cases and cases of them for me. And then I use the Easy Fermenter. This you can get on Amazon and you just stuff the vegetables, screw this up, suck the air out, it comes with a pump and then you can dial your day so you know when it's done. So super easy. And I have two eight quart bowls and I just basically split the vegetables between the bowls. I'm not very good at cutting, so. And I will try to pay attention just in case anyone has questions. And I'm gonna try to go as quickly as possible because I don't want anyone, I don't want this to turn into like a 20 minute video of me chopping up vegetables, if I can help it. of the cabbage is the harder part. And I'm just gonna, again, cut it down every little bit. And soon we will get to the part with the salt. That's always a question that I get is what about the salt? People are usually afraid to ferment vegetables because you have to add salt. You don't have to, you can use whey from um, like raw goat's milk or kefir. I don't know how to do that. Um, and I guess I could just Google it and figure it out. But I find this to be a lot easier. And now my bowls are overfilled. So you can see right here, the bowls are too filled, which is why I wish the bowls will go down a little bit as you start um, adding the uh, salt. And then the salt pulls the water out of the vegetables. And then the even though the bowls are like overflowing right now, there we go. They won't be overflowing all along. So, sunflower seeds. I like to get the organic sunflower seeds. I don't buy roasted because that's not what I need. Um, some people will take the seeds and then, like, you can take them in a, do I have one? What is it? Hmm. I don't know where it is. So hold on a second. This is what I I crush. What is it called? Eggshells in. So it'll work for seeds. So just take the seeds. Take all of them. You can put them in their hole. I do like to crush them. They won't be long. Have garlic. This lovely thing about this garlic is this is made in California and it's already peeled. And so I can just take one thing 
of this garlic and split it between all of the bowls. So when it comes to garlic, a lot of people are like, okay, garlic is, hey, sweetie, garlic is bad for dogs. It's not, it's great for dogs. It's too much garlic. If Rodrigo, who's right here, um, were to eat all of this garlic in one sitting, this and a little bit more, then we could probably have a problem, but that's not what he's doing. I think, I don't know if there's how many are in here, but I'll put about three cloves of garlic into each bowl. So I think there's nine, definitely nine in here. Oh, there's gonna be four in each bowl. So there's 12. So there, and that's it. I don't chop them up or anything. I just let them soak up and get in there. And the ferment doesn't taste like garlic or anything like that. So I'm going to use my hands and mix up one of these bowls. And I'm sorry you can't see this, but I just basically use my hands, mixed up a bowl. Maybe if I turn this down, you'll see it and it won't tip over. Yeah. So hopefully you guys can see this. Let's take that out of there. But anyway, if you can. So I'm just gonna basically, I just did that. And then what I do is I take Himalayan sea salt, just a big thing of it, got it at Costco. And, and do this. I'm sure you, I mean, you can measure out, you can look online and find how exactly much, but after you've done it for a while, you'll just do it by feel. And I just basically mix it up and you can start feeling the water coming out of it. So my hands are starting to get wet and the water is gonna start coming out. So what I'll do is I will put the salt into each of the bowls, mix it up and let it sit. And I let it sit for 20 minutes and just let the um, water soak out. And what I'll come back and do is I'll tip the bowl over and look at the bottom to see if there's water in the bottom. If there isn't, I'll put a little bit more salt and um, massage it a little bit more to get some water coming out of it. It usually takes, tip this up, it usually takes eh, about 40 minutes. I do that about two times. And then um, I will then add a little bit water to it at the end, just like maybe not even a quarter cup, just like the faucet pour it in a little bit and then I'll mix it up one last time and then start transferring it into the jars and getting ready to seal them up and that's pretty much it so I know that was a long way to get to it I'm gonna download this video fast forward the chopping parts and then re-upload the video later on but that is how I ferment vegetables super super easy these will stay in the garage for 10 days and then I'll transfer them to a freezer safe container and they'll go in the freezer I do sometimes just scoop and add fermented vegetables to individual meals, but that's very, very rarely. Mostly I make big batches of food and the first thing that goes into a bowl is a container of fermented vegetables. And so I mix that into the bowl. And the reason why I do fermented vegetables is because besides vegetables being a great source of nutrients and fiber and antioxidants, fermenting them also makes them really great for the gut, which means that they're gonna be also boosting the immune system. So this time of year with the spring and allergies, Rodrigo has environmental allergies. Um, the vegetables are great for him and his history of gut problems. And it's beneficial just for all of my dogs, but it really doesn't take a long time. It doesn't cost a lot. The vegetables that I bought today probably cost me maybe $20, maybe. Um, how how long will this last? That's a good question that I just came up with on my own. Um, these vegetables will probably last a couple of months, maybe. But what I do is once a month, I will do this process. So they always have vegetables in the freezer. And then in about September or October, I will do it probably twice a month so that I can stock up so that it'll get me through part of the winter. And so, and that's it. I mean, I could do it year round. I just worry that if it's sitting in there for 20 days, I'll forget that I have vegetables fermenting. I mean, I'm that person. But anyway, so thanks for watching. And again, I'll download this fast forward the chopping parts and re-upload it so that it's a little more easy to take. Talk to you guys later.